Okay, diverticulitis and diverticulosis. The reason I put these two together is because one is simply an exacerbation of the other. And these, I mean, this is truly a, a, a pretty simple uh, condition, but let's talk about it really quick and let's talk about what's going on here. So diverticulosis, what is diverticulosis? Okay, here is an image of a large intestine. So what you'll see here is here's normal mucosa. These outpouchings down here are the diverticuli. So diverticulosis is simply outpouching of the intestinal mucosa. And you can kind of see the difference between the outpouchings and the normal ones, okay? So what happens with diverticulosis is, is these outpouchings develop uh, and they just happen along the uh, intestinal mucosa. This is not a big deal. Um, it's not a huge ordeal. The problem is, however, if something gets trapped inside here, so a little seed, uh, little pieces of food, etc., get trapped inside these diverticuli, and then they start to become inflamed. And as they become inflamed, they can become uh, infected. This infection, this bacteria, can lead to perforation and peritonitis. So once the diverticuli become inflamed, that becomes diverticulitis, and these diverticulitis can lead to uh, perforation and peritonitis. So that's where the, the, the concern is with this. So again, we have our, our large intestine here. And along our large intestine, right, we know this is all kind of bumpy and everything. Along our large intestine, what can happen is we can develop these little diverticuli. Okay, not a huge deal. And that can be assessed via colonoscopy, okay? Bring a little camera up here, we check it out. Okay, looks good, looks good. What can happen, however, with these diverticuli is they can become inflamed and infected, and that can lead to peritonitis, um, and that can become a much bigger ordeal. So this here is diverticulosis. This inflamed one here is diverticulitis. And you can use your medical terminology course you took here. Itis is going to be inf in inflammation. So diverticulitis is an inflammation of a diverticuli. Okay, so what's our assessment going to be like? Again, here's our, here's our colon here. And what you'll see here, you can see these little diverticuli. Okay. These little outpouchings within the mucosa. So what we'll see is we'll see left lower quadrant uh, pain worsening with straining. Okay, so as a patient's trying to strain, uh, possibly coughing or, or going to the bathroom, then you're gonna see that that left lower quadrant pain gets worse. And this is all with diverticulitis. They have, might have an increased temp, that could be a sign of uh, inflammation and infection. They have, may have nausea and vomiting. They may have abdominal distension, just kind of like a bloated abdomen, bloated feeling. Uh, and they may have melana. Melana is blood and stool. And it's going to be really stinky, it's going to be really dark, um, and it may be red. Okay, that would be melana. So therapeutic management for these patients is going to be um, NPO to provide bowel rest. We're going to have them go to bed rest. And we're going to introduce fiber slowly, okay? We also want to increase fluid intake to help um, soften the stool and allow it to pass. Avoid gas forming feuds uh, and provide bulk forming laxatives. A big thing that you're going to see, this is going to be a key to the NCLEX here. You want to have them avoid nuts and foods with small seeds. So nuts, uh, things like strawberries, uh, any, any foods with small seeds, popcorn, Okay, any foods that are, have small seeds that can become trapped inside those diverticuli and lead to the inflammation. We can also have colectomy, which could be a removal of a portion of the colon, or we can have colostomy. Okay, so let's talk about a colostomy really quick, or colectomy. If the person has a colostomy, a colectomy, 
they're going to end up with a colostomy, okay, right? So what happens here, let's say here's our colon again. Okay.